Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Christian here and you're tuned in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, glad to have you here. Hopefully you will enjoy the content today, the conversation, the dialogue, and uh, yeah, you'll stick around, subscribe, and be here for more of the critical thinking and the conversation. If you are a returning two center, then hey, family, y'all already know we're about to get into it today, okay? Three points that matter most before we start any discussion. Number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you. And I do too. Now, I skipped saying in my last uh, two videos, I believe, and I apologize because y'all know that's the motto over here that we live by, all right? Or at least that's how we start the videos. <laughs> but um, today will be no different. You know, it's going to be more dissecting the mind of the brainwashed individuals who are in church. And this is going to be a topic that I think is probably literally like the main focus of black church money. Um, why so many people don't mess with church, um, choose not to be engaged and involved as they probably were in childhood or, you know, even as adults introduced to religion or Christianity because of money, the, the love of money, right, which scripturally Christians love to quote, the love of money is the root of all evil. Um, but then you get to church and that's what you're asked for. That's what everything is about. Sowing, giving, right? Um, ain't gonna call it an investment, child. You'll never do that. But it's always about sowing and reaping, sowing into good ground, sowing a seed, you know, reaping what you, you what you sow. That is the main marketing point of religion or Christianity from my experience specifically. And that's a very big issue with people who choose not to be Christians or not to go to church on a regular basis because they get tired of being asked for money or people who have been in church a long time or who grew up in church and saw their parents or their grandparents go and not get anything back from it. Never really experience or live abundantly compared to the pastor. Every pastor does not have a mega church. Every pastor is not a millionaire. Every pastor does not even make six figures a year. I'm not saying that every pastor does that or has attained that level of financial stability from being a pastor. But what I will say is pastors have access to capital, access to revenue, access to income at their discretion based off of what kind of board, what kind of team, staff, support, whatever they may have backing them that does not question them. They have unlimited access to funding and it is used to their advantage, whether they be millionaires or not. If they need to take $100 out, get 250 here, there, whatever, they can do that. It's their church and they take what they need and it ain't about sowing a seed. And so my question today is, is it greed or is it a seed? Whatever the church may need, how do they come about getting that? And this is all sparked by a post that I saw a pastor's wife post um, here. And y'all like the background, you know, little church made out of money, honey, because that's what they do. OK, <laughs> that's what they do. Don't be mad at me. OK, I'm just the messenger giving my two cents about the thing. So let's get into this post that was made um, by a pastor. OK, so it reads. So you still think the church is profiting off your tithe and offering the church rent $3,200. Let's not forget. We need light $700 per month and water $700 per month. The music you enjoy each Sunday, pianist $500 a week, drummer $500 each week, worship leader $350 each week. That's $10,000 a month already. If the AC breaks $900 upgrades can cost 5 K. You give maybe $50 every week, if that. That's $100 a month. Your pastor still has to come out of pocket. Wait before you say, well, we all give every week. Your pastor still covers what you don't. Before you think the church is profiting off your sewing, think again. I'm being nice with the bills. Whew. Yes, yes, come on, use me. Use me right now. You better use me right now. You better use me right now. Here's my hands. Here's my feet. Use me. You better come on and use me. Use me right now. All right. That song is now available and streaming on all platforms. 
Y'all, I just conjured the spirit of snap, okay? I just conjured the spirit of shade, okay? I just conjured the spirit of not today, because <laughs> we don't play. Let's get into it. I wanted to read that through just for you. Now I'm about to do what it do, because that's why we're here. <laughs> Y'all, let's take this line by line, because what? She got time. So you still think the church is profiting off your tithes and offering? The tone, the tone, baby. Watch your tone, baby. Watch your tone. Watch your tone. Okay? You're talking to people who actually work for the money that you're about to break down. Let's be very clear and start from the beginning before you even ask the members questions like, so you still think the church is profiting off your tithe and offering. Let's start with this. The church that exists on every corner, every street, every other block, whatever it may be, was started by a person who wanted to start a church. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Since y'all want it, let's do it. Since you want to make posts like this as a pastor, this post was shared by a pastor's wife, reposted, because this is subliminal stuff. This is subliminal. And I think that what's so hurtful is that you all end up showing your true heart and intent by what you share. It's not about what you say with what you share. It's about what you share and don't say. Because see, she didn't say nothing with this. She just put two red exclamation marks in the repost. And then this was the repost. So you're being passive aggressive, first lady. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Choose a different route. But see, now you finna F around and find out. So first of all, as my daughter says, first of all, first of all, Y'all pastors want these churches, not chicken. Y'all pastors are the ones who want these churches who say y'all have been called, chosen, selected, you know, from a random drawing of numbers. Shout out to the lottery. Y'all claim y'all the one that received the calling, that got the calling, that answered the call. To me, just as I've stated before, I am a business owner. I am a visionary. I am a leader. I am a pioneer for something of my own. Guess what? It is my responsibility. Shout out to the Rugrats. It is my responsibility to make sure my business is successful. It is not my responsibility or my goal to get other people to fund my business outside of what they get in return. Let me tell you what people at church get in return for the tithe and offering that you're now about to break down. To see, what you're not saying is that nobody pays any money. You're just saying y'all don't get enough money. <laughs> Shout out to the Pillsbury Doughboy. Y'all aren't, you're not saying you don't get their money. You're complaining about how little you receive. How much it doesn't stretch. But let us not forget that you could go get a job. Because y'all are preaching how often? Once a Sunday for some of y'all with smaller ministries, twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays, Bible study is after 6 p.m., 7 o'clock central, okay? So, I don't know nobody's job that don't end or don't have an option to end at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. My point is, y'all can go get a job for the business that you want to run. You all are spiritual hustlers, and y'all are bothered by the people who are not funding your hustle. Because, see, you're not spending Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the hospital with people. You're not spending Monday through Saturday before you preach on the one day a week Sunday doing uh, the Lord's work. Y'all want to walk around and act like y'all doing more than you are when you're really at Chinese buffets really sitting up in the barbershop, kicking and laughing when you shouldn't be. Like they say, beer budget, champagne wishes. And now you out here with attitudes being, you know, shady and rude to the people who actually make it possible for you to play in the streets on the weekdays. 
while they're at work at their desk without delay. So if they're only giving $50 every other week, kudos to them, because guess what they need? Money to pay for the rest of their lives. For the other part of their lives that you don't compensate, for the other part of their lives that you don't sow into, for the other part of their lives that you don't stand by and actually protect, support, or champion. It's so selfish to have a pastor who essentially is a CEO who only wants to take and give nothing but words. And I got to tell y'all, at this point, it is not an even fair exchange. Some of y'all don't like y'all pastors and leaders anyway, but y'all keep going because it's toxic trauma bonds. Y'all don't believe what these people be saying. Y'all don't like half the people that be talking or speaking over you. You go because you are committed to ritualistic experiences with no results, no proof that it is working for you. That's concerning because I can tell you right now, you can read the Bible on your own, by your loan, at your own house and home for free. You can. You just keep going back because some part of you likes the abuse. You're comfortable with the relationship that does nothing for you, does not make you feel good, does not strengthen you, encourage you, or actually make you better. You're okay with it. That's fine. But see, what we cannot continue to do is act as if though your pastor's business plan did not or does not include your income. Your income is literally the only thing that's keeping him or her free and clear to play games out here like they are big shots, like they're big time. It don't matter if they got 10 members or 200 members. It is hallucinations and delusions of grandeur. And that's how we get to the prideful speaking or not prideful. I ain't going to say that it's not prideful. The disrespectful speech or typing that took place on this on this status right here from this pastor. So you still think the church is profiting off your tithe and offering? What kind of question is that? And if I do think that, can you show me otherwise? I don't care if you're not profiting off of it by, by meaning that you pocket all of it. There's profit in everything. Let's be very clear. I have to have a P&L statement at the end of every year to show what our financial standings are. There's profit and loss in every format of business. Church is a business. Say it with me. Church is a business. All disrespect. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, no disrespect. All disrespect. Your church, the church you went to, the church you grew up in, the church your best friends with the pastor, the pastor's children. It's a, it's a business. It's a business. Disrespectfully, it's a business. And they operate as such. He's literally listing the expenses, the overhead, the costs of operation. Operating capital is required for all businesses. And do you know who he claims or she claims told them to go into business? God. But do you know how ironic it is that God who gave you the vision, called you, selected you, chose you, gifted you, anointed you, did not provide for you, does not supply for you, does not help you get by, does not help you overcome, does not help you do the work of the Father in abundance. You're out here talking about God, but you don't look like God. You out here claiming God, but you don't mirror God you're out here saying that God is your father your supplier your giver but you out here looking the opposite of God confusion I am <laughs> I am the I am confused about what you are saying because this does not add up the math does not math and my calculator is definitely one of those you know the expensive ones from Texas Instruments I got a graphing calculator, okay? And I'm telling you that I am putting in the things and they are not adding up. No matter what he broke down here, it does not add up. Your church, your expenses. Your members, optional expenses. No, no, no. Optional, unexpected, uh-huh, 
it, income or revenue. Variation cannot be determined to be determined. A tentative number. It's not solid. You can't do projections on something that fluctuates like this. It's not a business, it's not a solid business model. Church isn't, but it, it works. It may not be profitable for everybody that's in church business, but it works. Get a job. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can work. The strength that the Lord gives you to stand up there and holler, scream and spit in the microphone is the same strength that God will give you to pick up, put down, walk through, sit at, type in, write whatever your job requires you to do. Show up for work. Have the income that you need for your home and for whatever else you need to make up as it concerns your side hustle. I mean, your business. I mean, your church. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I mean, that's what every other person does that starts the business and has to get it off the ground or whatever. Church is a small business. The, other, the only unfortunate part about it is you all like to operate it like it's some kind of mega ministry with somebody else's money. That's not okay. Because I would think that the God of abundance would make sure there is no lack that will cause you to type a status like this. So the church rent is $3,200. Get a smaller building. How about I do you one better? Don't get a building. Hmm. Meet in the free open clear park. Because be, from what I hear, JC was preaching everywhere. Traveling by sandal. Okay. <laughs> by sandal and ass. Uh-huh. But no, y'all don't want to meet at the park. Y'all don't want to meet at the library. Y'all don't want to meet at some gymnasiums. Y'all don't want to meet at community centers. Y'all don't want to go and do church at an elderly home, a better or abuse women's shelter. Y'all don't want to do ministry there. Y'all don't want to have praise and worship by the clapping of hands and the stumping of the feet. No, 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 no. We need 250 plus seat auditoriums or sanctuaries. We need the finest of the finest light fixtures, robes, uh, pulpits slash stages decked out with throne chairs. Make it make sense. You can't. You can't make it make sense. You can't. Because it's for you. So if the church rent is $3,200, that's your problem. Because guess what? You don't need a building. You all aren't even occupying it 50% of the time. You're only in it four days a week. And if you want me to believe that out of the four days that you all are in there for what, two or three hours, your water bill and your light bill is $700? You're talking to someone who has commercial property, who has bills with employees that use the bathroom, use water, not once a week, not twice a week, not three days a week, not four days, but six days, most on average, weekly, daily a week. And you want me to believe that my, mm, on average, on average for the water now, um, like what, $72? And the light bill, it fluctuates the light and the elect electricity and gas, air, all of that together. All of that a month is about like $279. Commercial property. Lies. I'm telling y'all what I know. Because y'all in commercial property. So I know. Like, and I'm in Texas. I don't know where he at. But what I'm telling y'all and what I'm giving y'all figures for, just from experience, not... <laughs> I ain't trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be real. Not trying. I'm just being real. I'm just being honest. Because somebody should do it. Because other people refuse to. If you are spending $700 a month on lights and on water for a building, you all don't occupy 50% of the month. You have other problems, sir. Because I'm talking about six 
eight hour shifts, six to eight hour shifts. Me getting there early, 8 30, 9 o'clock, you know, leaving, turn the lights off, maybe at 3 30, 4 o'clock, depending on what the you know production schedule. You have to understand you're not talking to somebody that's that's is stupid. You're not. So cut it out. You throwing numbers around just to make it seem bigger. And I will say this again, I don't know what, what kind of church they have. I don't. But my point is get a job. Let's keep going. The music you enjoy each Sunday. Pianist, $500 a week. And if they get to play once a week and make $500, but you get up there and preach hoop and holler for Lord knows how much money, list your salary, baby, too. <laughs> you are part of entertainment as well. Don't just give me the salary of the musicians. Give me the salary of... Mm-hmm. Clergy, tell me what you get paid, but you left that out. You left that part out. Every Sunday, what do you take home in earning? Okay, that's what I thought. So the music you enjoy every week, everybody makes 500, well, pianist and drummer make $500 a week. That's $2,000 a month. Great, I think that's fair. I do because, and by, by fair, I mean market value on the experience in church of how y'all literally use musicians to drive the environment for the manipulation, the control <laughs> in the opening portal and trance that y'all put people in. So let's increase what they make because y'all need their music to drive the people to feel like there's anything worth them staying for at all anyway. I'm just saying, y'all use them for y'all entertainment, for y'all opening act. They should be compensated. And I don't want to hear none of that. What happened to people using a gift for the Lord? What happened to y'all pastor using a gift for the Lord? They're not out there sowing their gift for free. Shout out to the pastor appreciation y'all getting ready for. Shout out to the church anniversary that they get money for. Shout out to the pastor's birthday that y'all got to stand up and give cards to. And each auxiliary got to collect money from each member for. The pastor don't get his gift for free. So why the drummer and the, and the pianist and the worship leader got to be for free? If I'm singing and shouting the house down before you get up here, run me my money. <laughs> okay. Y'all got to make it make sense. If it's going to be this way for him or her, make it like this for them as well. Worship leader, 350 each week. Great. No problem. I highly doubt everybody who sings on a praise and worship team at any church gets this much money. I highly doubt that. But this paints a picture in a narrative that by and large, this is what's happening at churches across the, the, the globe, especially in the black church. I don't believe it. I believe there are several musicians, hundreds of musicians who do not get any money let alone $500 a week. But I do know some musicians who do make that and then more, and more. I know musicians here in Dallas who play for some churches and the churches have three services a Sunday and they make $1,200 a Sunday. I do not have a problem with that for you as a musician who sit there, who's driving the whole service, lifting everybody into an emotional trance and experience you are the reason your pastor has free leeway to do what he does because of what you played or what the, 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 um, the worship leader sang. Pay these people. It's entertainment. Next up. And let's not, let's not even forget, just like I said about the rent, you ain't got to have that building. You don't have to have none of these people. Everybody got a voice that they can lift up to the Lord. Everybody got a voice that can sing praise unto God. Everybody can do that. It worked just fine for our ancestors in the field singing together with no music. But what are we doing? It is entertainment and an experience that y'all want to be a part of your business model. Just say that. That's 10K a month already. Uh, and... <laughs> is it 
I don't even know. Let me let me add this up. I know. I mean, I ain't added it while I was talking or before. Thirty two hundred plus fourteen hundred plus a thousand plus three fifty. Oh dang! Nah, he can't count. Dang. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, okay. I did, I did, um, I didn't do the 500 a week. Okay, so that's 50 50 right there with just all of that. But let's add it up to see if it's start if it's 10,000, because that's what that's what he said. All right. So you got $500 a week. That's 2,000 plus another 2,000 plus 350. Uh uh, plus another three fifty, plus another three fifty, plus another three fifty. Okay, yep, that's literally ten thousand dollars each. That's ten thousand dollars a month. That's how I know he lying, cause he added he he made them numbers do what it do for the purpose of this post. Um, but I digress. That's my two cents. So that's ten k a month already. Okay, if the AC breaks, nine hundred dollars. Looks like you guys should get rental insurance. Looks like you guys should get property insurance to cover that. I don't know. Get um, someone on a retainer, a contractor or someone of that nature that you have on a retainer for things like this. It's the cost of business. It's the cost of operation. It's the risk that you take as an entrepreneur. You can call it a minister of the Lord, a worker of God, but you're an entrepreneur. Um, upgrades can cost 5K. Mm. What needs to be upgraded? We're coming in to sit, stand, sing, leave. What are the upgrades? What upgrades are we talking about? Are we talking about your office? Are we talking about the pews to chairs? Are we talking about the carpet to hardwood? Are we talking about the uh, the the uh, paint on the outside? What are the upgrades? Okay. You give maybe $50 every other week, if that, in parentheses, shade. Palm tree, honey, is what's waving in the wind here. You give maybe $50 every week, if that. So now you pocket watching? Somebody that's supposed to be giving unto the Lord? Mm. It's not looking good for you. It's not looking good for you. It's just really not. Not... I don't like it. You give maybe $50 every week. And if that is what is given, I'm okay with that. People have lives. People choose to go to the YMCA. People choose to go to Anytime Fitness. People choose to go to um, the movies. People choose to go to, um, uh, what's it called? I was going to say Penn Stack, but the bowling alley. People choose to go to the beauty salon. People choose to go to the nail salon. People choose to get massages. People choose to go play golf. People choose to go to McDonald's. Guess what choice is? I mean, guess what church is? A choice. And when you get there, you can choose how much you want to give or not. You can choose if you just want to sit and observe or if you want to participate. That's your business. Free will, free choice, the end. So saying things like you give maybe $50 every other week it's almost saying you owe us more than just that. That's all you're giving? That's you saying, I know y'all make more money, but you give $50 maybe every other week? Okay. Okay. Your pastor still has to come out of pocket. Mm, it's his business. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Mm hmm like, if my sales were to dip during an off season or down season, I can do one or two things. I can cut expenses by lowering hours that are available to be worked by my by my staff. Right? I can run more sales, make more deals, offers, and strategize marketing wise to increase revenue or income. What I do not get the opportunity to do is complain about having to run my business, operate my business at the expense, not of my staff or my work, my workers, or even my vendors. Figure it out, Christian. That's the cost of entrepreneurship. And you 
or an entrepreneur pastor. Okay. Wait, before y'all, before you say, well, we all give every week, your pastor still covers what you don't. I'm glad to hear that because that's what they should be doing because it's their business. And if the relationship is so amazing, spot on and led by God, God should be blessing their lives specifically to ensure they can continue doing kingdom work. I have had videos about this before talking about pastors taking care of their church, pastors leaving an inheritance to their church, their ministry. Just like you get life insurance for your family, put something in there where whatever your premium, whatever you've been paying into your insurance policy will cover whatever the debt is on the ministry that you claim the Lord led you to, to start. For the love of God, please take care of your church family. Nobody wants to talk about leaving an inheritance or a legacy that actually still can continue to live on and, and uh, support the community that they take up space in. It's a lot of selfishness. It's a lot of selfishness. And then you say things like this, but you need to understand your pastor should cover it, baby. Your pastor should because it's your pastor's business. It's your pastor's calling. It's your pastor's gift. It's your pastor's anointing. And your pastor makes sure to remind you of it all the time. However, when they need something, want something, or feel some kind of way, it then becomes an us mission. It then becomes a we ministry. No, keep the same energy that you have on appreciation day when it's about you. Keep the same energy that you have on your birthday when it's about you. Keep the same energy when you want us to do something and you use it being done for the kingdom against us for you against us. Keep that energy. Keep it. Don't switch it up now and talk about how much our tithes and offering ain't paying. You can use it to do something. All of the expenses aren't falling on you. You don't have to come up with all the money. But guess what y'all could be doing? Y'all literally could be sharing these buildings, all these churches and all these ministries with all these made up names. Y'all literally could be sharing these ministries, sharing members and ministries, having different services for different groups. <laughs> you start at 930. I, I do a service at 11. That way it's open 24 hours, baby. Y'all want a little 7-Eleven spirit over there? Come on. That to me is really thinking, you know, in an evolved manner. When you get four or five pastors that have four or five different churches, turn them other four into community centers and just use one for actual services that have different time slots or different sessions or different sermons that go forth throughout the day. Y'all want to act busy so bad. Turn, turn y'all churches into community centers and serve the people in the area that you are taking up space in. And utilize one of the churches or the buildings to actually have services all day and let people just come in as they please at their leisure. All this be on time, beating people over the head about their attendance and their sacrifice and their engagement and how they volunteer or how they worship or what they're doing. Allow people to just roll through, come in whenever they want to. Just like at Catholic churches, you can go in a Catholic church right now, sit down and pray by yourself and ain't nobody going to mess with you. Ain't nobody going to bother you. It's open. It's open. But y'all want to play these games because y'all want to own it. But y'all don't want to own it when you got to pay for it. That's a problem. But that's not my problem. So last but not least, before you think the church is pro uh, profiting off your sewing, think again. I'm being nice with the bills. You can be as nice as you want to be, but it still comes down and boils down to this. Take care of your church family, just like you want the church to take care of yours. You've made your life, you've made your finances, you've made your business, everybody else's. And to be honest, none of them can leverage, use, or even request anything from the church the way that you do, the way that you can. Nobody from the seats can come up to you and put pressure on you to give to them. Nobody. 
You all would ask them so many questions. You guys would request so much documentation. You guys would want to pull the records on attendance and on tithing. But when you say it, when you get up and, and, and require, request, demand, you just want people to bust open. You want them to bust down, okay? You want them to bust their purse open through the middle. <laughs> like a bust down part on a lace front. You want them to bust it down for you and give you exactly what you asked for. Hmm. It's not fair, but it's real. It's not fair, but it's real. And when I read this post, the first thing that came to me, the first sentence, the first sentence, the what resonated in my spirit was, dang, God ain't never needed a platform. God ain't never needed y'all churches to exist. God has never needed y'all churches, y'all sermons, y'all, y'all ministries. None of that to be God. None of it is required. Y'all want it. Y'all want this stuff. Y'all want the $3,200 rent. Y'all want the musicians that y'all paying 2 k a month. Y'all want the bills. Y'all want this. Not God. God don't need it. God is God with or without you. God is going to exist with or without your church's address. Period. Without your two or three services a Sunday. You're not needed. So your platform does not actually elevate the only true and living God. People do that. Uh-huh. You see? You see where I'm going with it? God doesn't need a house. Because at this point, it's given that God is the, the mega pastor. God got a lot of houses. According to y'all with all these churches. But y'all complaining about God taking care of all of them. So I would then want to know, did God ask you to start it, tell you to start it, lead you to start it, show you how to start it? Because church could have looked differently based off of what God spoke to you. Church could have looked like you being in nursing homes every week. Church could have looked like you starting funds or uh, not funds, but you starting scholarships and grant programs for uh, single mothers or single fathers. Or people who are transitioning and getting reacclimated into society after being in prison or incarcerated. That could have been the church or the ministry God wanted you to flow in. But you decided you needed a building. Just like people on social media want blue verification checks, y'all want churches, not the chicken. And when it doesn't work out the way that you thought it would, that you thought it should, or that it could, you post stuff like this. You post stuff like this, and that's why I can't trust y'all. God ain't never needed a platform, only people. God created what God wanted to exist, to magnify it. People, humans. So how amazing will it be once y'all all discover that we're all little churches walking around here? <laughs> That we're all little miracle signs and wonders. That we're all God's tithe and offering to this planet. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready, but it's okay. So this breakdown right here, man, get out of here with that. Comments. It sounds like, well, the person's name was Trayvon. Trayvon. It sounds like Trayvon them, them, Trayvon them church need to lay off some folks and restructure because 10K monthly expenses for church is completely ridiculous. You think that's the gist of this post about laying folks off? No. How about not having a business plan that requires other people to give you money when they need money to live themselves and you're not doing anything to strengthen, encourage, empower the people who actually come into you for something they could read at home by their loan? Whatever. The next person said, this ain't the real issue though. They just use this because it's easier. And obviously they're talking about this isn't the issue with what people, you know, what people at church are complaining about or saying they have a problem with and why they don't attend. They're complaining about something else, but this is the easiest excuse. I would, you know, <laughs> I would caution and I would say that's not true. I think this is one of the reasons, one of the issues why people do not fool with y'all at church because you all do want money. 
all the time. And I know people will say, well, it take money to make money or it take money to run this church. You wanted to start the church. You wanted to do ministry. You said God called you. Why is this a conference call now? I want to come and enjoy it when I want to come and enjoy it. I'm not obligated to fund it. People want to buy from me when they want to buy my product. I'm not, they're not obligated to give me money to make sure the lights stay on. No, I'll give you money when I'm getting something in return. Y'all out here giving money and ain't getting nothing in return. Y'all not getting respect. Y'all not getting dignity. Y'all are not being honored. Y'all are being manipulated, controlled, and held in bondage to your own belief system. It's backwards, but it's reality. This next person said, and it ain't never paid my daddy's or my mama's bills. Signed the biggest pastor's daughter. What? <laughs> it's stuff like this. Hopefully, and I'm assuming this person has a, a, pa a father who's a pastor. And obviously, either her, her daddy never had money or he had a job. And so then I would say, congratulations. Your daddy did it the right way. He paid his own bills. He took care of his own family. He did what he was supposed to do as a father, as a leader of his home. Take care of your home. And if you can't live off the church money, cool. If you can get a salary or be paid weekly from ministering, cool. But if your family doesn't need the church money to pay your household bills, that is your business. Either way it goes. But y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for that conversation. But I do, I do feel like, again, this right here is a flex, like being sarcastic and smart. And it ain't never paid my daddy's or my mama's bills. <laughs> Go ask your daddy if it has or not. You don't know. You don't know what your daddy was out there taking. When people love talking reckless to church folks on behalf of their parents, not realizing you don't even know your parents. When it comes to pastors, I know their family don't know who they really are. These men and women of God be whole problems whole problems and all they do is see their parents ripping and running going here getting that doing this for people so in the child's eyes it looks as if though the parent is doing everything right and perfect and putting other people before them but honestly sometimes some of these pastors be ripping and running to cover their tracks they be ripping and running to, to, to get to the bad they be denying and rejecting y'all so that they can do what they actually want to do which is have have presence and power and influence it ain't because they just want to sacrifice so much of their time away from you to help the people of God. It's because it's self-serving, period. It makes them feel good. It is a certain feeling to stand over people and have them hang on your every word. You don't know what that feels like until you've had that opportunity. Artists explains it, what it feels like to get on the stage. It's exhilarating. Your blood flows differently. And I'm talking from a person who does public speaking. I know it is a different energy, especially once you get your flow about you, you can pop off. You become somebody else. You elevate, you literally get to a point where you feel like you are floating and you're not you. You tap into a higher sense or power and you are going, especially if you know what you're talking about. And pastors have this, this experience every week. It's, it's an intoxication of sort and they're not going to let that go to get other humans, other adults lingering on the word that is supposedly God's, but they get to twist it any way they want to and it be believed and practiced? Get the fuck, get out of here. Get out of here. Your daddy didn't benefit from that money. Now, you can believe he ain't if you want to, but the bills have been paid by the tithe that has been gave by the people, okay, who have stayed. Bars for days. <laughs> Y'all better get my music on iTunes. I don't have music on iTunes, but... You know, I give what it gives. So lastly, this comment under the post said, unfortunately, when you have had, when you have those bad apples in ministry, it makes people question things like this. So we can't be quick to jump on those who question it because we all know pocketing money is the case from some churches. She's correct. I've seen it firsthand. Question the books at some churches because money was missing. Have somebody write a check for, write a $5,000 check to the church and the pastor says it has to go towards his household and to pay the rent of his wife's business. Mm. Sounds like my pastor who asked us to pay for his wife's car note, but I digress. That's why it's so hard for churches 
who are doing and living right to gain the trust of the people when it comes to when it when it comes down to financially supporting the church. That would be true. So I'll never act like this ain't happening in our community. But there needs to be some kind of process that new people need to go through in order to deal and heal from those bad seeds they have been under. Because I've always been in leadership, no matter what ministry I was under. And your mouth would drop if you knew how the funds of the church is mismanaged due to greed from the pastor. <laughs> yeah. And it's crazy because like when people get firsthand accounts like this, they get ignored because she got ignored. She did, you know. Everybody gonna get your comments. Everybody gonna get a response. But all I'm saying is there is truth being spoken from people like me, people like this individual who, who made this last comment and they give literal examples of this stuff happening and then you'll have people jump in the comments against them or against me and say things like you're going to church for the wrong reason you shouldn't be there for people what i'm only here because of y'all because god is not sitting down here with us god is not in the first second or third service it's y'all that we're here for we're here to gather with each other to sing these songs because god don't need none of this music it means nothing. The praise and the worship is for the entertainment of the living and the dwelling beings in the edifice. Why are we acting like we don't know this? The games y'all are willing to play with y'all selves are cool. I have a problem when y'all try to rope other people in who don't want to play them too. That's the thing. And it's funny because I watched a video this week on, um, on Instagram and y'all may have seen it too, but it's a video of a woman saying, yep. I'd be the villain in your story. Everybody got to have a villain in their story. I'd be the villain in your story because you're the clown in mine. That's how I feel about y'all at church. I will be the bad person on the internet or on YouTube that's speaking out against what you all continue to be subdued and subjected to at church. I'll be the villain in that story for you. Just know that you're the clown in mine. You are definitely giving Ringling Brothers. You're definitely giving Barnum and Bailey over here okay you're giving that to me you're doing that um i see it i see the red nose i see the white face painted i see the um the red lips i see it for you i see that for you homie clown and ho homie the clown and homisha you got homie the male and homisha is the female i see it i see that on you that that <laughs> that red nose look good on y'all and that's what y'all doing and y'all y'all keep going Y'all keep being subjected to it. Y'all keep getting talked too crazy. Y'all keep having people break stuff down to y'all without context. Um, and without them coming to the conclusion that church only requires all of these gimmicks because y'all started it. Y'all started it. Even y'all own Bible and scripture text speaks nothing of a church, nothing of a building. You all are, have made this up. So now you all have to live with the blueprint you've created. You guys have to literally live with the expenses that come along with it and you have to be willing to sustain it and it's not a sustainable business model because people are getting tired of you and they're leaving so that means you're gonna have to get a job you can no longer play easy bake oven <laughs> at church you can't keep sticking play-doh in there and saying that it's cookies cakes and pies we're gone we're at home we're enjoying our sunday with our family our friends our loved ones at brunch OK, we will catch you on the flip side of a good chicken and waffle. But it was never giving. We're staying here for this in order for you to keep complaining about cost of operation for a church you claim God told you to start. All right, y'all, if y'all have any more feedback, I would love to hear what is your think, your thoughts on this? How do you feel about the topic? Is it um, a church need, a seed or greed? Mm -hmm. whose responsibility is it <laughs> and that is something from uh rug rats. i think it's so funny um how they used to say responsibilities but whose responsibility is it to take care of the church and i am going to say the pastor and god's that's your personal relationship may god bless you increase you 
Cause his face to shine upon you to be able to do whatever you claim that I call you to do. Take care, y'all. Subscribe to the channel. I love to add you to my two cents crew. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye.